Dr. Fizz, Theoretical Physics, Chapter J, Spinners. Our first section is fun with matrices, and we will be looking at two by two matrices since they are the ones that are very important in the study of the electron. So here is a general matrix A, which has uh, elements A, B, C, D, which can be complex in general. And the first definition here or property is the trace. The trace of this matrix is simply to sum the diagonal components here and get A plus D. The transpose is given by swapping the off diagonal components. So you put C up where B is and B down there where C is. The complex conjugate is obtained by taking the complex conjugate of each of the elements in the matrix. Notice that in mathematics you will find different notation for complex conjugate. We're using the notation that is kind of very common in physics. The Hermitian conjugate is next and that is obtained by first doing uh, the star of everything, the complex conjugate, and then doing a transpose or vice versa, doing the transpose first and doing the star. So let's look at this here. If you take the transpose, you swap B and C. All right. So we swap B and C and then we star everything. Or we can star everything and then swap B and C. So it doesn't matter. Think of the uh, Hermitian conjugate, which is A dagger as the transpose and then the complex conjugate or the complex conjugate first and the transpose. In math, they will use different notation here. Sometimes you see an H and they use a star here, but we're using the notation of the physicist, which is to use the star for the complex conjugate and the dagger for the Hermitian conjugate. The determinant is simply given by taking A times D minus BC for a two by two matrix. That's your determinant here. And your inverse is a matrix that when multiplied by the original matrix gives you the identity matrix, which is a one zero zero one. Notice that some matrices have no inverses. For example, this matrix B doesn't have an inverse. If we're in search for a invert, an inverse here, B times A gives this general form, 1 times A plus 0 times C, A, 1 times B plus 0 times D, B, and 0 times A plus 0 times C, 0, and 0 times B plus 0 times D, 0. There's no way you can get the identity from here. You can pick the A to be 1 and the B to be 0, but you are no way going to get this lower right-hand component. That's what messes you up down in there. So B has no inverse. What we would like to do is try to find an inverse for a few matrices to psych out the rule. Now, of course, we can set up four equations with four unknowns and, and try to do it that way, but we want to gain some insight as to how this is working. So let's try finding the inverse for a simple matrix that has 3, 0, 0, 4. So I look for a case here, a general matrix, and I multiply here 3 times A plus 0 times C. It gives me 1. I turn this sideways, smack it against here, I get 3. I get 3B plus 0, all right? And I'm going to write the results down here. In other words, 3A plus 0 has to be equal to that 1. Then 3B plus 0 has to be 0. And then 0 times A plus 4C has to be equal to 0. So 4C has to be equal to 0. And here, 0 times B plus 4 times D has to be equal to 1. So 4D has to be 1. So with those uh, conditions, let's see what we have here. This says A is one third, so I put in one third for A. This says B is zero, so B is zero. C is zero, and D is one fourth. Now if I pull out a 12 in the denominator, then I have four, zero, zero, three, and I notice that, hey, that's swapping the diagonal components and putting the determinant out here in the denominator out in front. So I come up with rule one, a possible rule one that might apply in general. Rule one says swap the diagonal components and divide by the determinant. That's what we did here. For a practice problem, you try to see if this works when you have complex numbers. Now my next challenge is to try to find the inverse for a little more complicated matrix where we have replaced the zero in this upper right corner with a one. So we do the same procedure we uh, multiply this by some general matrix form that we're going to be looking for 
as our inverse, so 3 times a plus 1c has to be 1. 3b plus 1d has to be equal to 0. And 0a plus 4c has to be 0, so 4c has to be 0. And 0b plus 4d has to be 1, so 4d has to be 1. So if we look at these uh, conditions, let's see what we have. Well, the c is equal to 0, so let's get that one in first. And if c is equal to 0, then a is 1 third. And then we can go to, hey look, d is easy, d is 1 fourth. And what about b? Well, b is negative d over 3. Well, negative d is negative 1 fourth over 3 is negative 1 twelfth. Pull out the 12 like I did before in the denominator, then I have a 4 here to get 1 third. I have a negative 1 here to get my negative 1 twelfth. I have a 0 in the lower left place, and a 3 over here, so 3 over 12 is 1 fourth. I notice I have my determinant out here again, and it looks like I have another rule, rule 2 is put minus signs in front of the off diagonal components. Now I didn't really do it for this one, but my guess is if it happened up here, it probably happens down here, and this may be a general rule. So for your practice problem, here try this with the complex numbers in the three places and see if it works, and then see if your rule that we arrived at here works for this matrix, which has complex numbers in all four places. It's going to work. So we proudly state the rule here that the matrix A, B, C, D, its inverse is found by taking one over the determinant and then swapping the diagonal components and then here putting minus signs in front of the off diagonal components.